Hey guys, here's my day one recap for the Tel Aviv Grand Slam 2023. Starting off with Cats from Australia, breaking someone's arm. And I'm not too sure why the Italian didn't tap. I mean, he's in a really bad position. No getting out of this. I mean, come on. Save yourself some damage. Basili making his return to 66. Unfortunately, he was up against Margot Velashvili early in the rounds, so he went out there. It was an interesting battle though, back and forth. Wazari for Magavlashvili and then Basili with a nice Orchigari. So 1-1 one, one apiece and then Magavlashvili comes out with this little technique here. I think they call it Subame Gaishi. But anyway, Magavlashvili, he took gold. So I'll have another video on him soon and go check out that one. Next up, another Georgian, Naidiradzi. Haven't seen him before, but interesting Shimewaza. See how he's got the lapel under the shoulder? And this is against Sets. Sets made my top 20 epons of 2022. So it's unfortunate to see. But he did it twice. He did it twice this choke against Shamilov here as well. Slightly different this time. I'm not quite sure how he's setting this up. It looks like your typical Sankaku entry. But instead of having the lapel under the chin, he's happy to have it under the armpit, which is really interesting. Below did, she's also gone up in weight recently, so seeing some interesting matchups. Deguchi versus Beloded here, and Deguchi gets a nice Wazadi. I mean, Beloded so light on the feet, you must imagine these trips she would be pretty weak to. Deguchi taking good advantage of it there. And earlier on, Beloded, she won by Shido against Yoshida, but this was kind of weird from Yoshida. Watch her feet. She just kind of slipped out of the tatami. So there you go, back to Japan for slipping. That's a bit unfortunate there. But I do think Beloded, she was going to win that contest regardless. Next up, my favorite, bit of head diving. Bit of head diving. Anyway, let's get into the results. So under 60, Makidze from France. He took gold and he had a pretty good day, so I'll have another video on that. But pop quiz, name a Frenchman who isn't Teddy Renier, who won a gold medal at a Grand Slam recently. I can't think of anyone. But in all honesty, I do think the French team, they're on the way up, they've got a new generation, and things are looking good. Klimkite and Deguchi, they had a bit of a back and forth. I thought Deguchi looked relatively good early on. She was attacking well with the Osotogari. I'm not sure if Deguchi has stamina issues or not, but uh, Klimkai, she definitely came on later as the round went on, and especially deep into Golden Score. And it's kind of interesting, Deguchi, she didn't like the sleeve grip from Klimkai. Didn't really have an answer for it. I'm not sure why she didn't try to break it off. She just kind of stood there holding it. I think she might have been looking at it like, oh, there's a thumb in there and kind of waiting for the Shido. But she got thrown. And so Klimkai takes it. This was in the final for 66. Margovlashvili against Garigos. And Margovlashvili, he's kind of, I wouldn't say a return, but this is definitely the best performance he's had in quite some time. For bronze under 60, we had Yildiz from Turkey throwing Akhayev with his own technique. A nice kataguruma. And the height difference is, is quite incredible. It's quite amazing that Akhayev is kind of a specialist in that area being so tall. For Straten, he gets uh, Wazadi here against Katz for the other bronze medal. Shamilov, he lost to Gaitero in one of the bronze medal contests at under 66, but it was the other one that was kind of interesting. Flicker versus Naidoradzi. Now this here, I mean, two movements, so I think no score there is probably the correct call. There's just a couple of calls that seemed to kind of odd, could have gone either way for either guy. I mean, this here, I like it as a counter, but not given a score. This here, I'm not quite sure why Mate was called, but... Drop down Seoui Nage, Naizaradzi tries to counter it. Maybe because he was slow to enter into the technique, I don't know, but I saw that technique all day long. Here's one example here. Shamilov catching the drop Seoui Nage, and then going in for the Sumigaishi. Okay, that's given Ippon. Okay, understandable. This one here as well. Dropping down. Drops down again. Picks him up. Throws him over. Sumigaishi. So in this instance, I'm not quite sure why you would stop the action. I mean, give give the guy the opportunity to go into Newaza. It's not like... I really don't understand why this was stopped. But in the end, I think they gave it to the right guy. Naizirazi here. This time a counter. I thought the one previously was better. 
but they do give this one a score. So he takes bronze there. Giles from Great Britain, winning with a trademark Nawaza. I think she's slightly becoming beloaded 2.0. People just don't seem to know what to do with her Nawaza. Also down another weight class, Pont. She also won with Nawaza. So it's almost like these European ladies, they're getting much stronger than Nawaza. Starting to figure out that, you know, the Japanese ladies, they're so good on the ground. And they have to be as well. It's a good way to win at the lighter weights for the women, I think. Bronze medal results now for the ladies. And this choke here, I mean, it's a, a clockwork choke. Standard, standard choke that we do often, but I think her opponent was out quite early here. And the ref just not taking notice of it. I mean, Blue, she had to roll her over. And I mean, I sh okay, she woke up pretty quickly, but I mean, this is not good. She's obviously disorientated. The ref should be grabbing her, making sure she doesn't fall over. But in judo, there's this stupid, stupid rule that the ref is not allowed to touch the judoka, even though he's doing it here. I mean, come on. Let's stop with the stupid rules already. Another Nawazan victory here. Pimenta from Brazil. And that's a lot of Nawaza wins in the bronze and also the gold medal contest for the winners. But here's one more for you guys before we get into the Epons. So Gambata here, I mean, Apo Wazari. And I thought she was going to get the counter there with the body lock. I mean, generally Mongolians like that situation. But no, unfortunately, loses to Epon. And speaking of Epons, here are all the Epons that are picked up on the day. Safarov with the counter here. Has Deguchi with that also Togari that she's so good at. Flicked her opponent down and went in for it there. Nice double sleeve also Togari here. Safarov again. Such high level judo Safarov, but I haven't really seen him in recent times. Very close work here by these two. The Ochigari ends up winning out this contest. This was probably one of the best Epons on the day, I thought. Really quick. Strong Seoinage. Really solidified his opponent into the mat there. Can I say that? Solidified his opponent into the mat. Akhaev. I mean, doing what he does. Transitioning from his Yokoguruma into an armbar. This is what I mean about the French team. This is Buba. And he went out in the first round. I mean, obviously his opponent from Turkey. Relatively good country of judo, but still... You'd expect the French just to be up there with everyone else. Georgians, Japanese, Russian. Anyway, guys, last deep on here. This one's a nice one by Garigos. Hand over the belt, which is really good. It just controlled his opponent well. Not sure if there was any head diving there. But anyway, I'll see you guys for the action on day two. Peace out.